today we are walking to the Auguste Rudin Musée Museum. I am on Rue de Varenne. I think you can see that. Rue de Varenne is an interesting street. There are many, many, many embassies on Rue de Varenne. And actually the president of France has a home on Rue de Varenne. So there is a usually a very large, significant police presence. Walking up Rue de Varenne. If you go keep going uh, straight ahead, you end up in the Champ de Mars. Um, Invalides, all of that is straight ahead. But it gives you a little idea of what the street is like. This one is probably a little more normal, if you want to call it that. Um, Rue de Varenne is, uh, you'll see lots of blue signs, but it is filled with very, very, very wealthy homes. Welcome everyone to the Extraordinary Women podcast show. And if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Well, today I am in Paris and I have taken you to the uh, Musée Rodin, which is, you all know him as a sculptor. Uh, there is a home. Let's see if I can spin around without driving you all crazy. Um, there is his home and the, the sculptural gardens, which are absolutely beautiful. And I'm here because I just thought it would be a welcome relief for you to, you know, see great beauty, be in the gardens. I've got something gorgeous behind me. Um, you can also see the top of, I think you can see the top of the Invalides, um, where Napoleon is supposedly buried. <laughs> Some of you might be able to inform me if, if in fact that is true. Uh, but this is a place I come regularly to be inspired, to relax. I don't know if you ever have those time periods when you just feel like, I don't know, ungrounded. I don't know how else to put it. Like you're trying to figure out what's next, where to go next, how to solve that problem. Um, does that problem even matter? Uh, and I, I, often I come here for that very reason, um, to pull myself back together, because we all need those places. I don't care where you live. I'm showing you Paris, but it doesn't matter where you live. You have to have those places where you can go to to refuel, where you can go to to, to ground yourself once again and figure out what is the next step for you? Where do you go next? And uh, and that may mean a bunch of things. Might mean, you know, starting a business. It might mean quitting a job. It might be figuring out your marriage, uh, figuring out your relationship, how to be a mother to adult children, any of those things, any and all, because <laughs> those are the things we deal with at this point in our lives. So everyone, welcome. I hope you enjoy today's video. Again, we are at the Musée Rodin in Paris, France, which is in the seventh arrondissement, if any of you are coming here, on a very quiet neighborhood street, actually. And uh, enjoy! Paris is noisy, as you can see. Very nice. You will hear lots of children today. They are all out and about. You see in the leaves peeking out at the top here. And here is a thinker. Fascinating. We'll talk about Rodin in just a minute. But it was part of Dante's Inferno, where he was modeling it after 
the book, Dante's Inferno, which will scare the bejeebers out of you if you actually read it. <laughs> but uh, it was rejected. They it never went through the entire process. And consequently, um, the statue was sold separately. Isn't, aren't the roses absolutely beautiful? Oh. I want to see if they smell. I don't know. Will they do a little bit? So the grounds of the, um, or the gardens, I should say, around these sculptures are absolutely beautiful. I'll give you a, a little bit of an idea. And I am here today because today is about inspiration about sticking to what it is that you want to do or what you think you want to do because I think Rodin is an example of that he is an artist obviously crazy artist grew up in a working class family very poor and uh, basically self-taught which is interesting now he had all kinds of mentors along the way um, but um, he was born an artist and he created and he was one of those sculptures that really took us from probably the very structured sculpture of the past into a more naturalistic type sculpture aren't these gardens just spectacular I am here because I need some inspiration. <laughs> and I thought, oh my gosh, why, what better place to come to than um, the Musée Rodin. The house, just so you know, the home, Hotel Biron, um, was, he, uh, Rodin actually rented the bottom two floors, used them as his atelier, and, um, and then convinced the state of France to purchase the home for him uh, with the agreement that France would then own all of Rodin's works at his death, which is what happened. I will take you down into some of the gardens before the rain begins. like me you're going wow but you can see the movement in his sculptures the imperfections of the human body he said he was inspired Rodin said his inspiration came when he took a trip to Italy and he was inspired by Michelangelo and you can see sort of a bit of that not that I am an art historian I'm sure many of you have a much better perspective of art and the history of art. Oh my, do you ever have days where you're just feeling like you can't get inspired? These are the days that you need to pack up your things and um, go someplace else. Go someplace like this and every city, every place it might not be a structured museum like this one with gardens but uh, they're everywhere just go for a walk because when we get out of our heads um, we can be inspired once again and that's what life is all about that's what figuring out and then pursuing and sticking to what it is that we want to do in our next chapters the museum has a restaurant, Lagostine, it's called. Um, I will come back and show you a little bit about that 
when we get further along. In the meantime, I am going to wander along. Oh, the French love their avenues, don't they? That symmetry is just something else. Okay, we're going to head over here. We've got bells, we've got greenery, we've got flowers, we've got sculptures. What in the world else could we need in the world? Beautiful. I think that's part of, oh, I will look at it in just a moment. But check out this gentleman. See the imperfections that are displayed? which is so much a part of Verdun's works. Last time I was here, it was freezing. It's the middle of winter. And I'm so happy I got to share it with you today. It's green outside. And warm. And not raining. I wonder what this man is doing. It almost looks like. He's carrying, it's like a jailer. I have to see, what is he carrying? Fascinating. Let's go find out. I'm in the muck. Oh, almost wiped out. I don't know. Oh, I think those are lilacs. How wonderful. Didn't see this before, but we have the Eiffel Tower peeking out. We're going to go take a look at the house now. Hotel Biron. your perspective. Such a view before I walk in. And I leave. And then down the avenue into the fountain area. Always a view, right? The courtyard. You can just see the horses coming in, can't you? And carriages. That is actually Dante's door. I will show you in close up. But that was the first thing he, uh, Rodin actually created under the guise of Dante's Inferno. And we will walk up to the home, us and a million children. <laughs> Don't you love it? <laughs> photographs up here. It looks like fabric, doesn't it? Incredible. You can see that people are all imperfect. Oh, she's lovely. <laughs> she has a Parthenon on top of her head. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. Now, if you are 
as somebody who is into architecture, you can see the room perspective, right? Isn't that something? These are all of his casts, which France owns now, and they have limited how many copies can be made off of the cast due to all of the forgeries, believe it or not. We are on the ground floor. There is a painting of the man himself. I love this color. You can't really see it very well on the video. It has much more green in it um, than it shows up on video. But it is a French, that French blue, green, gray, if that makes any sense. So as I said, we're at the Rodin Museum. And just to give you a little bit of details, I know this is not a travel video by any stretch, but I wanted to give you a feel of the details. The two statues that he is, or sculptures that he is most known for are the Thinker, which you saw, and the Kiss. He worked with both bronze and marble. He also worked with plaster, as I saw inside the building. The home, actually, that you saw was built in 1732. Don't you love it? And um, it was basically abandoned after for a, quite a while before Rodin found the building. And he moved his shops into the lowest level. And then, as I shared, uh, convinced France to um, basically uh, take over the building and in exchange Rodin would provide or give France all of his sculptures. Um, and I'm, I have my notes so <laughs> you have an idea of what I'm looking at. Um, there are a number of works in the actual home that are done by Camille Claudel. Very sad story actually I have to say. Camille was his student she was 18 when they started a relationship and he was 40 something um, but she was his lover his competitor his creative rival all of that and uh, when they broke up their relationship even though he was married um, but when they broke up she actually was committed by her family to an insane asylum so good lord right good lord <laughs> um, and there is a little bit of a Boston connection, um, only because Isabel Stu Stuart Gardner actually uh, collected Rodin, uh, which was kind of um, on the forefront of sculpture. It was something that was new. He had a new way of doing things. So anyways, um, why am I here? Why am I here? As I said to you, I'm kind of struggling a little bit um, with the book, Inspiration. And uh, when that happens, we need to get away. Um, I'm headed back to the States from Paris, and so it's always kind of a bit of a, oh, I don't know, it's like a wind down. I don't know if that happens to you. When you start to wind down one particular you know, aspect of your life and prepare for the next, and the next chapters can be like that, it's really kind of a wind down. Um, yeah, it's almost like you leave the place that you're at because you're actually starting to be in the place that you're going to, um, which is interesting when you think of it or look at it from the perspective of our next chapter. Do we actually kind of leave the old chapter that we were involved in, that we lived, and start to actually move towards what it is that we want to become? And that's a really cool thing, actually doesn't work so well when you're traveling but it's a very cool thing when you're thinking of uh, your next chapter design whatever that might be so I want to thank everyone for joining me today and if you like this video give me a thumbs up 
subscribe if you haven't already and uh, share your comments because I absolutely love hearing from all of you. So thank you. Take good care. Abiento.